Hi, welcome to Matthew Rayfield World, and today I have uh, something to show you, something new right here, a new, this, a new piece of web development technology pioneered by Matthew Rayfield World Research Lab. Now it may not look like anything special, it may look to you like simply a Spongebob animated GIF, but what if I told you that there is in fact no image on this page. It looks like an image, looks like a GIF, but in fact what you're looking at is three megabytes of pure CSS. That's right. With the technology that we've developed and are releasing today, you can take one animated GIF that's about, if I remember correctly, 758 kilobytes and convert it into three megabytes of CSS, a lean three megabytes of CSS. This is the CSS it generates. So you can see it's just a bunch of color codes and a bunch of gradients and one animation. So, so we got the animation here. We've got percentages of the animation for each frame. And then we have one linear gradient positioned horizontally. They're vertical gradients for one for every column of pixels and then we cycle through all those in the CSS animation CSS animation and we get something that looks like a GIF or an image it works on still images too but no it's just CSS so I think this is really going to shake up the uh, the ecosphere of um, you know web development and you're all going to want to do this. Let me show you. Let me show you uh, what else it can do. Because you can generate resizable images. I mean, you could do that with just a normal image. But again, this is pure CSS we're talking about. So let me show you. It also supports transparency, and I'll get to that. It's it's really quite a, a thing of beauty. And here it is. Here's the tool. GIF to CSS. It's a it's a a name that tells you just what it is. It's on MatthewRayfield.com. Link in the description. So let me show you just a little bit how this works. Um, we'll do the SpongeBob. So you drop your file here. You say pixel size. So if you notice, like that SpongeBob um, animation is a little, it's a little low res, like it's a little pixelated, and that's because these files can be big. Like I'll, I'll generate, I'll generate a full resolution one. You'll see. So we got pixel size. That's what that is. Pixel size of two means each pixel is actually two pixels. If you feel me? Um, scale is just the scale of the image. Reduce colors is, if you have that on, it chops the color to a three character um, char uh, color code, hex, whatever, whatever you want to call it, instead of the usual six characters, just to save space, because it does add up. Uh, then we next we got center, just center the page or wherever. Transparency for transparent GIFs, support that. Animation name, just the CSS animation name that's generated. Um, you know this thing right here, GIF to CSS Spongebob, the uh, CSS selector, so right now it's just in the body, but if you want, like this right here, this little animated GIF here, um, is actually not an animated GIF, that's also CSS, and for that I have a selector of like dot .head or something, we could do dot .sponge, resizable, that's the, you know, resizable version I showed you, and then crispy, crispy makes it so that the pixels are crispy, like, uh, with the gradient, typically, the colors will be, if you pull it out, the colors will kind of like between in between one another, which is no good if you need like pixel perfect um, image. So crispy makes them crispier. Yeah. All right. So we'll convert our SpongeBob here. And this one might take a second because it is um, a higher resolution that we're generating here. While it's generating, let me just say, uh, I don't know why I made this. I just thought it would be possible, so I did it. And originally, I had just thought I'd make a bunch of divs on the page and animate the colors of those, and I did that, and it worked. But then I got the idea of, you know, it would be so much cooler if you could just include just the CSS on a page. Someone viewing the source would just be like, what is this image? Like, there's no, there's nothing here. There's no markup on the page. Um, and then they would look at the CSS and they'd be even more puzzled. So that was kind of the goal. 
and um, I'm happy with how it came out. After doing the divs, I then tried to use um, circular, what are they called, spherical, circular, radial gradients, and I used one radial gradient for every pixel. That was super slow, looked terrible, and generated giant files. So even though this one generates big files, like look at this. Uh, we got 11 megabytes of SpongeBob right here. And, uh, but it, look, it works. I mean, to me, I'm just amazed that this works at all, that you can actually just with gradients have a video that plays basically is, is pretty baffling to me. Pretty amazing. Pretty speaks to the fact that CSS engines have gotten really fast. It's pretty nuts. So anyway, so there's that. Um, let me just show you the genie. Oh, I mean a GIF with transparency. Uh, boop, oh, transparency. Yes. Generating CSS. Booyah, there's our genie. And this is a slim one and a half megabytes from an image that was originally a, a bloated 56K. So so if you ever needed uh, to bloat up your images, then there you go. Um, that's it. I think that's it. Uh, link is in the description for this tool. The code I'm going to put up on GitHub. I don't know why anyone would want to use this. Oh, let me, I'll just show you just in case it wasn't clear. I'll try to do inspect this element just so you can you can dig into the style in here see how it see how it looks and sometimes it does kill the uh, web inspector oh yeah okay yeah see Safari actually works well for this I was having issues in Chrome with it alright so there is one of the gradients so this is <laughs> one of many gradients that make up this uh, genie here and um, there it is that's like one column of the genie and as you can see there's a lot of columns and uh, so that's how it works that's it I don't know just a weird hack for you on uh, on your your day to brighten your day okay hey thanks for watching and uh, until next time until I come up with something else useless oh I realized I almost forgot to do the voicemail we have a voicemail here for us let's have a listen yeah I'm looking for my grandson Peter have you seen Peter? Dude. Um, okay. Call me back, please. Bye. Okay, so there you go. Uh, grandfather uh, is looking for his grandson, Peter, in the uh, 510 area code, which is uh, like Oakland, I think. I looked it up. And uh, so if you know Peter, just let him know his grandfather's looking for him. And uh, drop in the comments, just let us know you've, you've helped out and make that connection. Um, so, But if you want to leave a voicemail, you can do that. Just call 813-531-7442. And uh, other than that, hey, I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, do, the, do the YouTube stuff. You know, you got to like it. You uh, subscribe to it. You hit the bell. Leave a comment. Just tell us Just tell us how your day's going. Tell us what you thought of the video. You know, whatever. Okay. Uh, thanks so much, and uh, until next time.